Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and it's a gorgeous spring day, and there's nothing better to do on a day like this than to fool with your bees, and what's better than that is raising some high-quality queens. I absolutely love raising queens. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, part of beekeeping. You can go to your best hive and or your best hives, and you can raise queens and daughters off of them and spread that throughout your whole bee yard. It's going to be so much more superior than what you can purchase, and it's really not that hard. So this video is going to be addressing how to graft your own queens. We will be having in the future a video on how to raise your own queens without grafting. But I highly recommend learning how to graft. And if you're wanting to do it, start now before you need to. Get some practice in because really the grafting part is, is the trickiest part. Just train your hands how to pull those larvae up and we're going to show you here in a second. So first of all, we need to find the right age larvae because if you graft from ones that are a little too old, then they're going to be inferior queens. There's a lot of debate on what's too old and what's not and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you what I prefer and you can decide for yourself. So this, I wanted to do it for fun. This is a, the hive that we pulled out of a rotten tree. I'll leave that video up here if you'd like to watch that cut out. And I thought, you know, it'd be fun to raise, uh, you know, 20, 30 queens off of her and just see what happens. They, so far they have a very gentle disposition. And I've already dug through here to save us some time. We're going to be pulling larvae off of this frame right here. And I'll show you what they look like in just one minute. Also, it's, it's not super warm today. So I wanted to kind of pull from a hive that had some insulation like this Apame. And then uh, we don't have to worry about the cool weather quite so much. So the first thing I want to do is I want to shake the bees off of here. And I want to make sure that I'm not seeing the queen. I saw her a couple minutes ago on the adjacent frame. So I just want to make sure she hasn't hopped on over. She has a green dot, so it's very easy for me to spot her. She's not on here. It's a beautiful frame of brood and just healthy bees. Tons of bits of um, bees with pollen baskets. I, I just can't help but point out there's pollen coming in like crazy. It's wonderful. All right, so we're going to shake it. You just put your thumbs up here, fingers underneath. And you're just, you don't have to really bring it up a lot. Just a little quick, little shakes like that. It takes practice, just like the grafting does. And honestly, it's a much more gentle way on the bees than using a bee brush or something like that. Bees are very strong, have a strong exoskeleton, they can handle it. So, now, let's see, is this the right side? Alright, it's over in here. And Laura let me know what I need to do, but over in this area there's some larvae of the right age that I like. Now, some people will graft a little bit larger. You tilt it however you need it, Laurel. And then once we start placing them on the grafting tool, we will show you what that looks like. So we had to move to a different location to be able to get the shots that we wanted to be able to. The lighting wasn't really very good for this, and it's going to be a little bit tedious trying to graft and show you this at the same time. I have some other videos. Um, if you go to the playlist that show you grafting with the Chinese grafting tool, and this one I'm going to be using the uh, German, which is my favorite. Um, however, many people love the Chinese grafting tool, and I've got a really good video on that in our playlist. Actually, I want to leave it up here. So let's get to grafting. And um, Actually, right before we do that, if you leave a comment in this video and you'd like to, you have a chance to win an Australian-made beetle buster. They kill small high beetles as long as it's warm enough for beetles to move. Um, beetles will die with that. I've got one myself. We'll be doing a couple more videos this year on that. And I've got some videos in the playlist um, of our um, YouTube channel. So if you would like to enter to win that, just leave a comment below. We'll be drawing the winner from this video only, April, at the end of this month, at 2020. All right, here we go. So we have our JZBZ bar, JZBZ cups. I've used wax before. I don't find there to be any difference if um, use going to the plastic over the wax. If anything, I get better acceptance with the plastic and I get great queens using it. And we'll see if we can reuse these later. All right, so let's get to grafting. Hopefully you can see this. Laura, you just tell me when you have it. So right here we have a little larvae. And we're just taking the tool and getting behind the curve of it. And grabbing that little larva. And there we have it right there. Has a little bit of jelly surrounding it, which is great. And then we're going to take it. 
and then we are going to drop it right in the cell. And now we are just going to do the same thing again. This one right here is a little bit tinier. Sorry about all the debris in the way, but I'm trying to make it to where you can see what's going on. And it's really not that hard. It's just like anything else you got to do it. This one is very, very young. It's very ideal. Very tiny. These larvae are probably a little chilled. You need to do this quickly and setting this up has made it to where it's taken a little while for us to, to get this done. It's only in the 60s today. Maybe 61, 62. Ideally, I would be doing this in my truck or something. That's a little one. All right. I felt like I scraped that one up against the sidewall just a little bit, and so when in doubt, just discard the larvae or place it back into the cell. We want larvae that are undamaged. So that was a, a really good one right there. Good size. I don't know if you can see that. We'll show it to you down in this cell over here. And I like to plant my finger on the rest of the bars and then just slowly drop it in. There we go. So that worked out really good. You can use royal jelly if you have it. Now, it's easy to get some. We're fixing to show you the hive that we're going to be dropping all these into. And it's just packed full of bees, packed full of nutrition. And what you can do to get your own royal jelly to make this a little bit easier is to place a frame like this with a lot of larvae into that colony about two days before you're ready to graft. This will do two things. One, they will be drawing a lot of emergency queen cells and they'll be packed full of royal jelly. You can use this, take the tool like this or something like that, and drop it down into these cups. And just it just takes a little bit. But when you have that in the bottom of these cups and you drop those larvae, they don't even touch the bottom of these cups. It just, they just hit that royal jelly and they just pull right off the tool. Makes it very handy for new beekeepers. Plus, it keeps them moist longer. You know, when I'm dry grafting, which is what this is called without priming these cups with royal jelly, I'm just basically one, two, three, four. I can do one of these bars in you know, a minute or so. And that way, uh, they don't get too cool. I'll, a lot of times I'll do this in my truck or a car that's pretty warm this time of the year, unless it's 80 or 90 degrees and then I don't have to worry about it. Um, you also, if you're going to have a bunch of them going at once, you want a hot, moist towel to drape over them so they don't dry out. Um, the other thing that it'll do, putting a frame like this in, doesn't only give you those um, that access to royal jelly if you want it, but it also gets all of those bees in the mode of producing a lot of royal jelly. This is extremely important. Um, I feel like usually the first takes into the box don't do as good because the bees aren't ready for it. And if you put a frame like this in, I typically find that pulling it out and then putting these in and making them queenless, I get a better first take. Now after your first one is done, it seems like from there on out you're good to go. But it's just opinions, 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 it's just what I've seen. However. That's, um, that's pretty much all there is to it. It takes a little practice just to kind of get um, a feel for it. But you're just going behind them. And I really like the size of larvae that we're grafting from. That's a really nice one right there. Let's see if that light helps at all. Does that help, Laurel? You know, we're just going to take that. And sometimes it can be a little tricky. This is, again, why a lot of people use royal jelly. Yeah, that one's going to be a little tough to get off of there. See, at this point, I'd probably just discard that larvae. Yeah, I'm going to have to discard that one. There wasn't a whole lot of royal jelly that that one came up with, and that royal jelly really is, or the worker jelly, whatever's down in there at this time, is really the ticket to getting them off easily. There we go. All right, so that's all it takes. Let's get to the part where we're taking them and putting them into the colony. So we're over here with the starter finisher colony. We'll have another video explaining the differences in um, starter colonies that start the queen cells and ones that finish them. We're using this one for a starter finisher. That way it's easy for everybody. Just a five frame nuke box packed full of bees. You can see our pollen patty. They're eating it very well over here. We've been feeding them some 
Um, you can use sugar syrup and water, or if you have your own honey, you can mix two parts honey to one part warm water, and that works very well. I don't recommend just feeding um, thick syrup or, or stuff. Um, I really feel like the thinner stuff's more stimulating. All right, so we have our grafted larvae right here. We're gonna be placing them right in between these two frames. This is a frame of bee bread, and this is also a frame of bee bread. And we're putting them right in between it so they have plenty of that natural um, fats. We also have the pollen patty and the um, frames of honey over here and a frame of calf brood. We showed you in another video how we set this up. I'm gonna leave that link up here if you wanna see how we did that. It's not that hard, but they have to be very packed. They have to be very queenless. They need to be very young and they need to feel like they have an excess amount of nutrition if you want an excess amount of high quality queens. So there we have it. We've painted the top of this frame and that way it's very easy for us to remember where it's located. Um, I, I went ahead and left this on the ground and that's what I typically do because um, a lot of people ask me why I shake bees so much but really it's much safer for the bees. Um, if I shake them up here it's going to make it harder for me to get this in. There's just so many in here. So I'm going to shake them down into here. Don't ever shake these frames right here. You're going to sh potentially shake the larvae out of the cups. Um, and if the queens are in a de developmental stage where their wings are being made, then um, if they shake around with those very fragile wings that have not hardened yet, then you will damage the wing and you might get a dozen or, or more great queens come out. But if those wings are even slightly damaged, they'll never be able to fly and mate. And uh, that's no good. So we are going to just uh, throw this in. A lot of people ask me why I put the insulation on top, but we are getting down in the 30s. We actually had a day down in the 20s and give us a little bit of frost, which was very, very exciting. But I'm glad to see that these bees are looking very good and ready for these little queen cells. And I mean, it, it's really simple. Once you get the, the hang of this, it's gonna be so awesome. So we're gonna need to put a little bit more um, in here we're almost out. We want them to make sure that that nutrition's incoming. Even on those bad days where they can't fly, we need to get that coming in. So, all right. If you uh, have any questions about what we did in this video, um, leave them below. Also, don't forget to comment below if you'd like to enter and win that um, Australian high quality made beetle buster. So thanks for watching.